We're a 97-year-old church that's met in uh, various places from the Elkhead area of our community all the way into here in town. And I actually became a Christian through the ministry of this church at our former church building down on School Street. And currently, uh, I'm a part of the ministry up here. It's been my privilege to be the lead pastor for the last three years. The journey at First Baptist is absolutely incredible. It's my idea of the, of the New Testament church. We uh, came here for the first time uh, when I was here visiting in town on a job interview and we just found it to be a very alive, spirit-filled church. And my wife and I drove out of town just saying that we didn't know if the job was gonna work out, but gosh, we sure did love that church. It's very much a, a portrayal of Christ and His love comes through our church family. What I like about the church is that we're willing to accept where you are, and I think we're willing to love and reach out and keep growing as a church and as individuals. It feels somewhat like I've come home spiritually. It feels as if I found a, a home where truth is spoken, where I can relax and uh, not have to put on any pretense and just be myself and be comfortable worshiping and loving the Lord and knowing that others around me are going to hold me up in truth and walk alongside. It, it's cool how connected we are and it's like a family here. People here really care, and they really want to know where you're at in life, and they really want to help you get to the, the next point in life uh, in your journey. People who come here, all they say is they felt love, and so Jesus is in this place, and it's L-O-V-E. I mean, it, when you see the dynamics of our church and who comes here and why they come, it's all about love. About three years ago, we really began to understand better who we are, our identity as a, as a congregation. And um, we just realized that God's called us to be Jesus Christ right here in our community. We're welcoming people into our fellowship primarily through our celebration service on Sunday. And as they're getting healed up from hurts, habits, and hang ups, and they're growing uh, through our, our crossroads Sunday school classes, through small group and uh, other opportunities to be trained and equipped. As that's happening, we're plugging them into to ministry. We're helping people understand their shape. What is their spiritual gifting, their heart or passion, their, their natural abilities, their personality and their experience in life. As all of that comes together, we're helping people understand what their role and where they fit into the body of Christ is. And then also, what is their mission uh, in the community? How are they called? and equipped and shaped to reach their world for Jesus Christ. In this church, what God's doing is He's using the people here to reach the community and really uh, connect in some unique areas of the community that a lot of churches haven't connected before, uh, particularly through some of the programs like Celebrate Recovery and things like that. Um, God's just really using that. It's just really been uh, something that needed to happen in this community. I mean, God's reaching people who just never would have set foot in the church before. Some of us have been to prison. Most of us have been in jail. All of us have messed up our lives big time. But now we are finding hope, help, and healing. From our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. Through Jesus Christ at the journey. I've seen Celebrate Recovery work in our community. I've seen it personally with Tom and other people that I've associated with. I know that Celebrate Recovery works. It changes lives. So when they came to me, and asked me to do Celebrate Recovery Inside, there was no other choice than to say yes. I talked to the jail and they said, let me find out if people are interested. I had all my arguments ready and I didn't even have to do any of them. And uh, the, the lieutenant in charge of the jail went back and called me up a, uh, a few hours later and he says, I've got 12 ladies that want to do it. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going into the jail. <laughs> I've seen a dramatic, change in our female inmates since this program has started. I take yarn in and plastic crochet hooks and sit with them for about two hours and they crochet and the shawls, this is one they've made. I was really happy today, I was talking with a, a gal and she's the first one from the group that I've worked with in the jail who's started coming to our church. So that was, God is so good. And the one reason that that I really appreciate the journey at First Baptist Church is that they not only speak the words, they put those words in action. And that is what's drawn me there and other people there is that they've seen God in action, not just words from a pulpit. I think that God's bringing the people from our community into this church 
And I'm not sure why, but I know that um, we need to be faithful to that and that there really isn't any more room. And so something needs to happen. And if he's going to continue to bring more people every week, he's calling us to something bigger. When we started coming here, I think it was up around 125 people were coming. Now we're upwards around 300. And, and to me, it, it hasn't changed. What Dars was saying that the, we can love you where you're at, it's still here. And it's, I, I see it growing. I mean, it's, it's just getting bigger. I think if the journey doesn't take the step to, to build, to add some more space, I think it's gonna help, it's gonna keep us from growing and experiencing what God has for us. There's at least half a dozen older folks who comment to me often about how difficult it is for them uh, to join us on Sunday morning. Regardless of how you enter our current building, you're going upstairs. And I'm not quite 50 years old, but I'm beginning to understand and appreciate uh, just how difficult that is. Just in terms of trying to serve and facilitate ministry, especially in Awana and uh, through our Crossroads Sunday School program, and even our main celebration service here, which is the, the primary connection that people have with the church, or at least it's the beginning connection, to facilitate all of those areas of need. Um, we need a larger sanctuary, we need more classrooms, we need more offices. But the bottom line is it's come down to the reality that we need to prepare for the future. I think we need a building that says God's here, He wants to connect with you, you need to grow and learn about Him, you need to become what He's calling you to become. It's a kind of exciting when you can uh, put your faith in God and just let Him work and sit back and say, wow, He did that. I think that God's getting ready to do big things in this community, utilizing the people and the love of Christ through this church. I think we need a building that says God's here. He wants to connect with you. You need to grow and learn about Him. You need to become what He's calling you to become. We need to have a building that, that says that we believe in children and, and we are bringing them to Jesus Christ and currently our building doesn't do that. So if we had the right facility, we could actually be holding a Wednesday evening service, a time of praise and study in the Word with adults simultaneously with our program for children for the Iwana program. This is a sacrifice that we're going to make that is actually going to impact and change eternity. There are people who are only going to come to Christ through what we're doing because we're obedient to God right here at The Journey. In the last 97 years, we've met in a number of buildings. Our church has met in a log cabin out on the Elkhead. They've met in a railroad car here in Craig, a little white building on School Street, and 
the newer building that we're currently in in West Craig. And the people 97 years ago had no idea that that would happen. They also had no idea that a little kid would receive Christ in 1969 at the church, the little white church on School Street, or that his wife would receive Christ uh, in the building on the hill out west. We have no idea the impact that we're going to have in the next 5, 10, 25, and 97 years from now. And it's really not about the buildings, it's about the ministry. It's all about the work that God's calling us to. And yet we need a building that facilitates our ministry. And I believe God's called us to another point of building and of impacting our community for Jesus Christ.